Good day. In the previous video, we discussed how to set up your payroll. In this video, I am going to show you how to set up your calendar year for the new tax year, how to increase your employee's rate of pay, and how to capture your payroll. Just to refresh your memory, in the video titled Payroll Beta Startup Guide, we discussed certain terminologies such as frequency and normal enterprise codes. Frequency being the method on which the employee will be paid that is either monthly, fortnightly or weekly. We also discussed the normal enterprise of the employee. This is basically the activity for which the employee had been employed. Remember that if you were moving across from the wages system, you would have already completed your annual PAY reconciliation at the end of February, paid your employees and printed out the necessary payroll reports and closed off the February period. You would then have converted your data and you will now be working in the new payroll on the 2023 version. In order to capture any pay details in the system, you would need to create the annual calendar for the tax year. In order to do this, you would click on set up payroll and then you will navigate to the frequency setup. As discussed in the previous video, your frequency for monthly, fortnightly or weekly heading should already be set up. If you click on next, you will then enter the frequency pay period screen. In this screen, you are going to generate the calendar year for your frequencies. So in order to generate the calendar for a frequency, I will click on generate periods. On this screen, I will select the frequency that I'm going to be creating the calendar year for. For this example, I'm going to be using my monthly paid employees. The start date is going to be one day after your last pay period. So for example, if your year had ended on the 25th of February, the start date in the new tax year is going to be the 26th of February. I am, however, going to insert my start date from 1 March 2022. My tax year is going to be 2023. This is the new tax year. Where it says minimum hourly rate, I'm going to insert the minimum hourly rate, which is 23 Rand 19 cents for farm laborers, because this data set comprises of farm laborers. But what you would have to do is that you would have to see what is the minimum hourly rate in the sector that you are working in. And you would need to insert that in this area. I would then click on monthly where it says select frequency for calculation as I am going to be creating the calendar year for my monthly paid employees. I am then going to click on go. This will then create my new calendar year up until the end of February 2023. So you will create the frequency calendar years in the system if you also pay on weekly or if you pay on fortnightly. Now that we have created our tax year for the 2023 tax year, the next step will be to increase the rate of the employees. Remember that this happens once a year or as your enterprise company sees fit. So in order to increase the employee rate of pay, you would click on employees. This will then open up the browse the employee file. This is the area that you can see your entire workforce. If you look under the normal rate, you will notice that I have employees who are either paid on a monthly rate, on an hourly rate, or on a daily rate. So in order to batch process and to batch update the rate of pay for the employees, all of the employees who have the same rate of pay are going to be tagged so in this example, I'm using my hourly paid employees who all earn the same hourly rate. I'm then going to click on batch update. So in this batch update screen, there are two methods in which you can update the employee's rate of pay. 
one being the new rate of pay where you would insert the rate either by monthly, hourly or by daily. The other is when you want to increase by a, a percentage. So this percentage could be anything that the government legislates or your company has decided on. So for example, if it's 7.5%, you would then put in 7.5% here and you would click on go. Remember that this is an either or. You would either increase the employee rate of pay or you would increase the rate of pay by a percentage. In this example, I'm going to increase my hourly rate of pay by 23 Rand 19 cents, which is the new minimum rate of pay for the employees who farm laborers for the 2023 tax year. So once I've inserted my hourly rate of pay, I do not need to select anything on where it says per day, month or hour because that has already been set in the employee. So the only thing that I need to do here once again, ladies and gentlemen, is to put in the rate of pay and then I click on go. Once you have done that, you will untag all. And as you can see, the normal rate for my hourly paid employees has now been increased to 23.19 cents. You will repeat this process by tagging on the employees who have the same rate of pay and by clicking on batch update. You will do this until you have increased all of the rates for the employees. The other alternative is that you can double click on the employee and you can go and change the employee's rate of pay under the normal rate section. However, you need to keep in mind that you will be increasing the normal rate for the employee one employee at a time so obviously the faster method is to tag the employees who have the same rate and to batch update them for the purpose of information remember that the employee's minimum rate needs to be whatever the government has legislated in order for eti to be claimed off an employee Remember that this needs to be applied in conjunction with all of the other requirements that are needed for the employee to qualify. Now that we have covered how to set up the 2023 calendar year and how to increase the rates for the employees, our next step will be how to capture your payroll. Remember that there are various methods in which you can do this. You can either capture your employee payment by inserting the information into the input pay details screen by creating your task entries, by importing from spreadsheets and from scanners. The first method for payment that I'm going to discuss is the input pay details screen. So if you look at the dashboard before you, you will notice that the screen is made up of the setup, the input report, as well as the period end and the year end reports. On top of the screen, you will see that there is a section that allows you to select the frequency and the period that you are going to be working in. So earlier when we created our annual calendar, we also created the pay periods for our year. To get started, we are going to click on the calendar. Now this will have all of the periods that are presently unlocked for the year means that these are the periods that we are still going to be working in because once you have closed off a period, after you have worked in it, it would go into the lock section of the screen. So if I clicked on the lock tab, I'll be able to see all of my previous year's information, which is now locked. If I click on all, it will show me all of the periods that I have set up for the previous years. So on the unlock tab, you are going to select the period that you are going to be working in. For this example, I am going to be using March 2022. I will highlight on March 2022 and click on select. This now means that I am working with March 2022 for my monthly paid employees. Before we get into the input pay details screen, I just want to highlight on the fact that in the previous video, we discussed the setup of the extra earning headings as well as the deduction headings. So if I click back to set up payroll and if I go to any of my extra earning headings, we spoke about the new area that has been put into the program, which is the in use column. 
So if you're gonna be using a heading, you need to indicate that it is going to be in use by either inserting a 1 which says in use or a 0 which is not in use. The same will apply for the reduction heading setup. What you would have to do after you have converted your data from the wages to the payroll is add in the amounts for any heading which you want the system to remember as these amounts will not be remembered from the wager system. The amounts will thereafter be remembered going forward. The same will apply for both extra earning headings as well as the deduction headings. Under the input, you will notice that the uh, tabs, the first one says generate default pay, then you have the option to import or export information, and then you've got browse tasks. When you are inserting the information via the input pay detail screens, there will be no need for you to worry about these three tabs unless you are generating default pay, but I will discuss that further when we are generating the task entries. What you would need to focus on here is the extra earnings and the deductions. So if I click on extra earnings, this is an easy way to capture any extra earnings that would be due to the employees. Or if I click on the deductions, I can also easily insert deduction amounts here. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, that this is either or. I do not necessarily have to insert my extra earnings or my deductions in these tabs. I can always insert them directly into the input pay details screen. But should I choose to insert my extra earnings under the extra earning tab or the deduction tab, I would then need to click on my calculate payroll tab so you can aggregate all of the information that we've inserted in the above tabs directly into the input pay details screen. Remember that the input pay details screen is essentially the hub where all of your information goes to once you have captured it. Whether it is capturing it by generating the default pay, importing spreadsheets or task entries or any other method that you would use in order to get the information into the program. Once you have captured that information, everything goes into the input pay detail screen and then you can either choose to edit or add in other additional information once the information has been put into the input pay detail screen. This is a last step in capturing your information before you move on to printing out any of the reports. To capture the input pay detail screen, ensure that you are working in the correct tax period you can either insert your deduction headings or your extra earnings in this section and then click calculate or you can click directly on the input pay details and you can then click on change or you can double click on your employee and you can insert the pay details here. So if I click on insert, the date that pops up is the last day of the period that I am going to be working in. I will then move across and select the enterprise code for the employee. Remember that the normal enterprise code for the employee will always pop up unless you indicate differently. In this case, I'm going to add in 24 general working days for the employee. I can then also click on insert and if I select my enterprise codes, I can then go and select any other additional enterprises that the employees would have worked. So I can then say that the person had also worked two general hours. And if there was anything further that the employee had worked, I will then go and insert all of the enterprise codes for the employees. Previously, I explained that you can also insert the extra earning amounts in the input pay detail screen. So the extra earning headings are at the bottom here. So for example, if the employee's extra earning had been other, I can insert an amount there. And as I change my amounts, my gross and my net earnings change as well. If for example, there had been deduction for housing as well, I can also go and insert a deduction for housing and my totals will change. I can then click on OK and move on to the next employee and insert the information. 
once I have created all of the entries for the employees I can click on close on the input pay details screen and I can go and run the relevant reports for the period the next way that you can capture the employee information is by using the generate default pay option this allows the user to generate the payment details of the employee based on what has been set up under the employee this is a quick and easy way to capture the employee information. So if I look at an employee, you have set up this employee as an employee who works 26 days in a month. So essentially when I generate the default pay, 26 days should show up for this employee. If I click on the generate default pay button, the following screen will come up. As you can see on the top, because we have already selected our frequency and our date range, this appears on the top of the screen. As previously explained in the payroll beta setup video, the enterprise code, if left blank in the screen, will take the normal enterprise code that has been set up under the employee. All I would have to do in order to generate the default pay is to ensure that where it says generate day by day, I have selected on no. If I click on go, the following screen will pop up. As you can see, I've got three employees who are in my monthly paid employees and they comprise of employees who are paid for general work on a daily basis. And I have one employee who gets paid for hours, which is general hours and the unit of measure that is shown is hours. So I've set up that my general daily employees work 26 days in a month. Therefore, it has put in these amounts for the employees. My rate for the employees is 150 Rand per day. So it's taken the 26 days and it has multiplied it by 150 Rand per day. And it has put in the amount that the employee would get paid. However, I would also be able to edit the information on the screen. Say for example, employee C1 actually worked 24 days. I can then go and edit the units and I can say that employee C01 had worked 24 days and hit enter on my keyboard. As you can see, the task amount has also been reduced. So if I choose to use the screen and also want to account for the sick leave or leave days or even absent, I can insert on the line and I can either type out the employee's registration number and insert the date. And I can select from my list of enterprise codes that this employee had been sick one day. And obviously if the employee has been sick, I have also stated that there is no pay for that day. If the employee had also been absent, I can click on insert again. If I choose not to type out the employee's ID and select the employee from the selection block, if I click on this, it will open up all of my current employees and I can then select the employee whom I want to insert the transaction for. I can also choose which date that I want to state the employee had been absent for. In this case, I am going to insert the 29th of the 3rd and again, I can either type out the employee enterprise code or I can click on the lookup and search for the enterprise code that I want to use. I'm going to insert A for absent. That was one day and the employee also didn't have any rate of pay. If I also wanted to insert any additional information, say for example, C01 had done general hours on the 25th of the 3rd, I can go and I can select that the employee had done general hours and say that the employee had done five general hours. Once I am done with the screen and have accounted for all of the days the employee had worked or had not been at work, I can then click on close. I can proceed to insert any extra earning where the employee had work. Say, for example, the employee had a bonus of 100 Rand. And 
and maybe the employee had a deduction of 50 rand for housing. I would insert this in the deduction screen and click on save. Once I have clicked on calculate payroll, it will aggregate all of the information that I've inserted above and it will put it into the input pay detail screen. So if I go and click on employee C01, I can see the information that I have inserted. There is my general hours, which was five, which is now accounted for. And because I have a task rate on there, what it has done is it's taken the five times the task rate, which is 20, and it has put an amount of 100 rand. And I've also accounted for my one absent day for my 24 general days that the employee had worked and also for my sick day. If you look at the extra earnings, you will see that the 100 rand that I had put into the extra earnings screen is now under the bonus. And the 50 rand for the housing that I inserted under the deduction is under the deduction screen. My UIF is also automatically being calculated based on the 1% of the employee's gross earnings and my net earnings is obviously less whatever deductions had been added on for the employee. Assuming that I have now completed my entire payroll for all of my employees, I can then click on close on the input pay details screen and I can go and print out the necessary reports and supporting documents that are needed for the payroll. Next, I'm going to show you how to capture the task entries. But first, what are task entries? Task entries are the activities the employee performs on a daily basis. In the farming sector, this could be activities such as weeding, plowing, picking, cutting, or any other activity that the employee would be paid for. What makes the task entries different is the way in which the activities or enterprise codes are presented. So quite often you may have pickers working on a macadamia farm who want to see how many bags of nuts they have picked on a daily basis. Or you may have cane cutters working on a sugarcane farm who want to see how many ropes they have cut per day. This may also be further broken down into the groups of employees or the field or the area the employee performs these activities in. The following setup will depend on how much of information you want to output or you want to show on the employee's payslip. Before we get into capturing the task entries, I quickly want to run through some of the setup that would be required when capturing this information. To any existing users who do not use the task screen to capture their payroll, you may skip this part. I have put timestamps in the link below so you can skip to the parts in this video which are most relevant to you. So I just want to quickly show you the employee screen. Just to refresh your memory, we have the frequency, we have the group, and we have the normal enterprise. So frequency is the method in which the employee would be paid, whether it's monthly, fortnightly, or weekly. The group is what the employee is going to be assigned to. You might wish to set up an employee within a group. An example of a group could be male, female, casual, permanent, or employees belonging to a particular team leader. These groups would have previously been known as contracts in the wages system. So if I click on set up payroll, I will then navigate to the screen that has my frequencies. On the left side, you can see the frequency setup. However, on the right side is the setup for the groups. So as you can see, I've got a few groups that have been set up. Let us focus on weeders, drivers and cutters. I'm going to click on next until I get to the field setup on my system. So as you can see, I have a few groups and fields that have been added onto the system. So for example, if you are dealing with cane cutting, you would have the groups and the fields set up in your program. Remember that this is not necessary. This would depend on the amount of information that you want to show. 
I also have my holidays that have been set up. So you would have to create this annually. So when you generate the default pay on the task entries, if you have holidays in the system, the program will then also account for those automatically. Now that we have discussed the setup of the group, field and public holidays, the next step would be to pay your employees via the task entries. So if I look at my employee list, I can see that the employees F01 to F03 are my fortnightly paid employees. Now you may only have monthly employees in your setup and that is fine but for the purpose of this exercise I am going to use my fortnightly employees to generate the task entries. Once again we go back to the dashboard. Remember that you need to change the date for the period that you are going to be working in. So I'm going to click on pay period start date and I'm going to select the period the 1st of March, the 14th of March for my fortnightly employees. Now this means that I'm only going to be working with my fortnightly employees for this period. I'm going to go back to generate default pay because this is where I'm going to generate my task entries. Once I've clicked on generate default pay, the screen will open up. As you can see, my frequency has already been selected, my date range as well. As explained previously, the enterprise code, if you leave this blank, it will use the default that is in the employee. If I do not put any units in here, the units will be zero. My group and my field setup, if I wish to use group and fields, I will then be able to select it from the list that I've created by clicking on the lookup here. I also have the option to insert my overtime hours for whatever overtime it is going to be, whether it is normal overtime, whether it's going to be holidays or Sundays. I also have the option to include Saturdays, include Sundays, as well as the public holidays. So if you remember that we just spoke about the public holiday setup. So if I had set up public holidays and they are within this date range, if I clicked on yes, it would generate a public holiday day for the day that I have inserted in my public holiday setup. Also, as discussed, if I wish to work with only one specific group, for example, my readers, all of the employees who belong to that specific group called readers will only be generated. So this is the important part. Previously, when I showed you how to generate the default pay, we clicked on no because we had wanted only one line with the default days or hours from the employee to be generated. When you are generating task entries, you are going to select on yes, and then you would click on go. So the following screen will pop up. As you can see, my normal enterprise code has come up. The date range that I've selected to generate the information for is from the 1st until the 14th. What I would simply need to do in the units column is I would need to state how many ropes the employee had done on that day. So if I insert two in line one, as you can see, it has taken two times 15 and it's put in a task amount. Say for example, on the second, the employee had a different rate and I can click on my enterprise code and I can select which rate the employee had worked on or different activity that they had done and then insert the number of units free for example and then I can go down my list and I can change the information quickly and easily I can go and insert the amount of units that the employee had worked obviously this is going to come from your register say employee F01 had done cane cutting on a rate of 15 rand for the rest of the fortnight so that is my first employee done 
Once you have completed inserting all of the information for the employees, you can then click on close. And as discussed before, you can go and either insert your extra earning headings here if you have any or your deductions. But once you have inserted any information in the tabs above, you would click on calculate so that the information can get aggregated into the input pay details screen. So if I click on input pay details now, and if I go and look at my cane cutter F01, and if I double click, I can then see all of the information that I have inserted for my employee. The dates come up with all of the enterprise codes, the units and the amounts. And then if there are any extra earnings or deductions that I would have inserted in the previous screens, I would be able to see them here. But if I choose not to use those screens, I can then insert any other additional extra earnings that I need to account for in this area. If there's any deductions that need to be made, then I can insert this in the deduction area. And once again, click on OK on the employee. And assuming that I have captured all of the information for my employees, I can then proceed to print out all of the monthly reports on the payslip. If we have a look at the payslip for employee F01, we can tag the employee and we can click on print payslip. So we can see on each and every day what they had actually cut. Remember that once you have inserted all of your information, printed out your payslips, printed out your supporting documentations, your month end reports, um, your next step would be to close off the period. So you will click on close period. The tax period that you're going to insert here is obviously going to be the one that you had just worked in. So in this instance, it's going to be 2022-03. Now this is assuming that I've completed my entire month, I've paid off my employees, and there's no further adjustments that need to be made for this period. I'll then click on go and that period will now be closed. So if I go back and if I look at my log periods, I should be able to see the period that I had just finished for my fortnightly employees here. If for any reason I wish to have a look at my supporting documentation, I might have forgotten to print out the information. I can click on this period that is locked. If you look at the screen, I cannot insert any further information. If I click on browse my task information, I cannot insert any information because this has now become view only. This is essentially what needs to happen because I am now complete that period. However, if I need to print out any of my reports that I had forgotten to print out, I can then go onto the reporting section and I can go and either print out my summarized pay sheet for that specific date range. And I should be able to get a report for the information that I had captured for that period. The other ways that you can capture the information into the program would be via the import options. So I'm going to change my date range here to my monthly employees. Say for example, I had wanted to import information either from, from spreadsheets, import tasks into the spreadsheets, or if I have clocking systems like Uniclocks, import access, or import deduction spreadsheets, I would be able to import all of that information onto the screen here. What that would then do is once the information has been imported, it would then put all of my information directly into the task entries and directly into the input pay details screen so that I can go and edit and adjust and account for any days absent, sick leave, any extra earnings or deductions that need to be applied. And once all of that information has been inputted, I can then go and have a look at my reports and print out my payslips and so forth. And remember that once you have finished accounting for all of your employees' earnings, and once you have paid off the employees, you would then click on the close pay period, close of the period in preparation for your new month. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that it has been educational and it has helped you in understanding the workings of the payroll system. God bless. Goodbye.